guess what time it is? It's almost summertime. Guess what I'm doing today? I am bringing you some of my most favorite summer DIYs with some patriotic ones sprinkled in for good measure. My name is Courtney. This is Creative on the Cheap. Welcome to my channel. Let's get crafting. For this DIY, you wanna grab a large wooden slice from your hardware store and cut it in half. If you don't have a miter saw or table saw at home, you can certainly ask them to do it at the hardware store. Make sure to give it a very good sanding. Next, sketch out a lemon wedge on your half wood round. I just found an image on Pinterest and used that as my guide. Once it was all sketched out, I was ready to start painting and I started by using some Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. I used that for the inside portion of my lemon then I went in with some white paint and for the rim of my lemon I took the color maize along with the color curry also by Waverly chalk paint and mixed those together and used that for the rim the final color that I used to add highlights to this was sunny day by apple barrel To wrap up this DIY, I grabbed some of my white wax and sealed my board good top and bottom. And then I attached two handles just with screws that I got from Hobby Lobby on both sides. And then that was it. This tray was ready to be used. Now grab the other wood round and let's make another fruit tray. So for this one, you want to grab the chalk paint Waverly in the color moss and paint the outside with that paint. Then next to that one, paint a thinner stripe of paint in the color celery, also by Waverly, and then go in with the very thin white stripe. Once those three paint colors are dry, the last step here is to paint the remaining portion of the wood slice with red paint, then go in and sketch out some watermelon seeds. Paint those watermelon seeds with some black paint, or you could use a Sharpie marker. And the finishing touch here is to take some bright green paint along the edge here in stripes, and then go back in with another shade of green, which is even brighter. You could use whatever shades you want here, and then seal it add your handles and it's finished. Hey, hey, you're gonna need a tag for this DIY. I had this left over from Christmas time from Dollar Tree. If you don't have a tag, make yourself one out of foam board, cardboard, whatever you can find. I took some brown wax and painted that on the back of the tag, then flipped the tag to the front and wanted to cover up that Christmas design and use some brown truffle paint to cover that up. I cut a stencil out with some stencil vinyl on my Cricut and then just used some paint to fill that stencil in. Grabbing a washer, you're gonna wanna paint that and just attach it to the top of your tag. I feel like it just kind of amplifies the tag just a little bit. Feed that twine through that hole and you've got yourself a cute little tag for tear trays or even bookshelves. I found this printable online. I will make sure to link it down below for you. I wanted to use part of it, of the design that is. And so I trimmed it down and then grabbed myself a bucket from Dollar Tree. You can grab any kind of bucket that you might have or planter or any type of container that would work for this. I wrapped a white piece of rope around the top of it along with a piece of brown suede trim that I had just to kind of give this more of a s'mores vibe. Once that was done, I just attached my label to the front with some of this Gorilla Glue adhesive spray, added my favorite s'mores toppings making all the good stuff and then this was ready to go you just grab it and go Now let's move on to another summer themed treat and that's gonna be ice cream and popsicles. I found this printable online. I will link it down below for you. I grabbed three different colors of felt and I cut out my little patterns. I've got a tan color for the popsicle stick and the cone pink for my ice cream and then I chose a green color for the popsicle. Once the popsicle sticks and the cones were cut out, I took that one piece and I just did a running stitch up the side with a darker tan 
um, embroidery thread. This is optional, but I do think it just adds a little character to it. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. But once you've got those all stitched up, you're ready to start assembling. So for the ice cream cone, I glued on the one piece of the ice cream and then I put another piece of the ice cream felt on top and I stitched around it again just doing a running stitch I put a little stuffing in there and then I closed it off now you certainly could use a sewing machine for this part if you'd like I am not that great at sewing I can do some basic stitches so I asked my daughter to help me and she was glad because she absolutely loves to sew and she helps stitch those up but if you don't want to do stitching you can use hot glue you can use whatever you'd like to close these up To finish up this garland, you will need to grab some of that green and pink felt and cut some rectangles. We're gonna attach these rectangles to the backs of these little ice cream and popsicles just by gluing the top of it and the bottom of it so that you can thread through it. And this will allow you to attach whether you decide to use twine or yarn or even ribbon. Once you've got this all threaded, you certainly could go in and add some little white pom-poms to it. You could dress this up as you want, but now you've got yourself a calorie-free little ice cream and popsicle garland. This next project is an oldie but a goodie and I still use it to this day. Grab yourself a mason jar and tape off the bottom. You wanna leave it about an inch on the bottom and we'll be using the same colors that we used to make that watermelon tray. So the bottom will be in the color Moss by Waverly. Your next stripe, which will be a little bit thinner, you'll tape it off and paint that the celery color also by Waverly. Now, I'm not gonna do the white stripe. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the rest of the jar with some red paint. Once that is dry, I'm gonna take the easy way and I'm just gonna use a paint marker to make my white stripe. I felt like I've got kind of shaky hands when it comes to doing really thin paint lines, so I just went the easy way on that. Then let's add some watermelon seeds. Again, take the easy way out. Use yourself a paint marker or even a Sharpie marker. You definitely want to seal this. I'm just using, again, some liquid wax here to get it all sealed up. Add a little bit of twine, add a bow if you'd like, leave it if you'd like. You could even add like a little watermelon charm if you wanted to, and then it's ready to go. You could use it for utensils, but I like to use it for my straws. Jot on down to your local hardware store or check out your wood scrap pile. You're gonna wanna grab a one by four that is cut down into four pieces that measure eight inches long. You'll also need some type of piece for the base. I'm just using a scrap piece of birch wood. Paint all of your pieces, whatever color you'd like. You could go bright, fun colors. I just went with white. Once those are painted and dry, take one of the boards, mark the center of it, and you wanna grab a Sharpie marker. Take that Sharpie marker, put it on the center of the board, and trace around the lid. We're gonna be drilling a hole here for our Sharpie marker to rest. We're making a cup station, and let's be honest, when people go to label their, their solo cups with that Sharpie marker, grandma always runs away with the Sharpie marker. So this will be a way to keep tabs on that pin. Once the holes are drilled, I'm just using a Forstner bit here to get that done. You can drill it on all four if you wanna put four markers, one marker, two markers, three markers, totally up to you. You need to make a label. I just used my Cricut Joy to make a label that says mark a cup, or I'm sorry, mark your cup and drink up. You could use stickers, you could use a stencil. Definitely seal it if you're gonna use stickers just to make sure they stay on there. Once that's done, you wanna assemble this. Now, I would use wood glue or even brad nailer if you have that. I am using what looks like hot glue, but it's actually wood hot glue to put mine together. You just wanna make sure it's super sturdy because this is something that will get picked up and moved around. Once it's all assembled, your last step, add those solo cups, add that Sharpie marker, and you are ready to have a party. Check out what I created for this DIY. I went in and made some summer prints using watercolor images along with some vintage dictionary pages that I found online. I will link that dictionary page link down below along with these printables that I created. This DIY doesn't get any easier than this. Take your print, trim it down. This is sized to fit any five by seven frame. Pick it up from wherever you'd like, the thrift store, Walmart, or even Dollar Tree. I'm going the cheap route and using a Dollar Tree frame. 
popping my image in there and I am ready to go. Grab yourself a canvas. It could be any size you choose. I'm using a four by six. Break it down, take the canvas part off and give the frame a nice sanding. Once that's done, you wanna take some popsicle sticks. I'm going to use the large popsicle sticks from Walmart and mark them out so that I can trim them down to fit inside my frame. Once those are marked out, I will take a popsicle stick and hot glue it to the back to secure these pieces together and then give this a nice coat of white paint. I'm gonna to go ahead and stain my frame you could paint it if you'd like to or even leave it natural from there you want to grab some wooden letters you can take them from Hobby Lobby Walmart Michaels even Dollar Tree once you've picked your wooden letters go ahead and give them some paint again I went a cheater route on this one and just used my acrylic markers from Arteza when the letters were all ready to go I knew I wanted to make a little bumblebee so I made a bee out of some air dry clay used my markers again for the detail and this is the finest little detail that will make all of the difference. For the wings on the bee, make yourself some hot glue wings. They look so realistic. Just do a little blob on some parchment paper. I had used wax paper. Don't do that. Use parchment paper because it'll peel off much easier or even on your silicone mat. That's even better hot glue those little wings down to your bee and you've got yourself the cutest little bee kind sign. Let's make a DIY that you can use for summer entertaining. We're gonna make a dice set game here. And for this, you'll need to grab a four by four from the hardware store and cut it down into four inch pieces. I found this template of dice online. I will link it down below. One method to get these dots on the dice is to take your template, stick it on a side, and where those little dots mark it with a thumbtack. The reason I'm marking it with a thumbtack is so that I can go back in with my Forstner bit and mark it directly where there's holes are so that my holes, I'm sorry, my dots will be exactly where I want them. If you don't have a Forstner bit and you're not a fan of power tools, the other option for this is just to take your dice template and scratch the back of it, go on there, trace around the circle, and then just directly stamp with a stencil brush, sponge brush, your circle on there. So either way, we'll get the job done, whether you indent the dice with the Forstner bit or you just stamp your little dots on with paint. Once that's all done, you definitely want to seal this because this will go outside. You want to seal it with whatever type of poly. I'm just using a wipe on poly. I find it super easy to work with. And that's it. You are ready to take this outside and play whatever dice game you would like to play and have lots of fun. Back to a watermelon DIY, grab yourself a pizza pan or some type of large circle that you can use as a template. I found this fabric from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to trace around my pizza pan so that I get a nice circle cut out of this checkered fabric. Once that's all done, I'm gonna fold that in half and take some green fabric, also from Hobby Lobby, and just freehand about a two inch rim all the way around, just using a fabric marker, and I will cut that out. I will then take some fabric hot glue and attach the green piece of fabric to the edge of my circle all the way around. When that's done, I will start to use more of that fabric hot glue and close up my pillow. I need to stuff it with some stuffing. And the finishing touch here is to add some watermelon seeds. I just cut some seeds out of some black felt that was stiff and hot glued those with, again, with that fabric hot glue directly to my pillow and it was done. Perfect for the porch, perfect for the patio, or perfect for your couch. For this DIY, you wanna grab yourself a pitcher. I grabbed this glass pitcher on Amazon. I really like it. It's great for entertaining because it comes with this tur stick along with the insert in the inside that you could put a bunch of fruit, ice, and it won't melt down into your drink and get it all watery. 
Once you figure out what picture you want to use, we need to make some decals. So I did use my Cricut Joy for this, but if you don't have that, grab yourself some rub-on transfers for Dollar Tree, or you could paint on there as long as you seal it. You could do a lot of things to get it labeled. So with the orange vinyl, I cut out some oranges and the word orange juice. Then I took some sparkle gold vinyl and I put the word champagne. I drew a line. So here, what this is, is a mimosa pitcher. So you could, again, do this for a variety of different drinks, but it's just something fun and cute, a way to present any type of drink for your entertaining. What's another fruit that reminds you of summer? Strawberries, of course. So for this DIY, you're gonna wanna grab some type of mason jar sign. This was left over from Christmas. Dollar Tree does currently have some mason jar signs. This is one of my favorite hacks. If you've never seen it before to get glitter off, I spray Goo Gone on it and I just scrape it away, wipe it with the baby wipe and it comes off so easily. So if you've never seen this hack, try it. It's my absolute favorite way to get glitter off. So for this one, I am going to go ahead and paint the back of it white and then I'll paint the other side white just to kind of clean that up and make it look nice. You want to grab a fabric. This one came from Hobby Lobby, but just whatever type of summer type fabric you like is fine. You could do solid red, you could do green, but I just like the polka dots. I cut a circle and put that on top of my mason jar and then I'm just reusing the twine that was already on the mason jar to secure that fabric down on the top. From there, you'll need some felt in red and green. You're gonna wanna cut out a strawberry shape for the red felt and then a little spiky green for the top of the strawberry. I'm gonna hot glue those down directly to my mason jar. And for the lettering on this, I'm just gonna use stamps. You could use vinyl, you could use stickers, but I'm just gonna stamp out the words fresh jam. I know it's not really fresh jam because it is a wooden thing. And I mean, let's be honest, fresh flowers that are fake, you all know the vibe, but still it's cute. So once that's all stamped off to finish off my strawberry, I'm just going to take wood dowel and just put some little white polka dots on there, get that little detail all nailed down. And then this is ready to be displayed. Stay tuned through this DIY because I've got an interesting question to ask you at the end. Grab yourself one of these small pictures from Dollar Tree or wherever you have a frame, it could be any kind of frame, and paint it black. You'll need some stiff green felt and stiff red felt. You're gonna need a thing of painter's tape um, to mark your circles. So this is just the little cardboard part on the outside of the painter's tape. Use that as a template for the green and then actually use the inside of the tape for the template for the red felt. Once you've cut that out, you want to just put that red piece of felt on top of the green, cut them in half and look at that. We've got ourselves some watermelon slices. Now here is my question for you. When I was making this, um, I decided to do it was a little 3D dimension here and use some black colored glue from Surebonder. You guys know I love the colored glue sticks. And as I was putting these on here, I swear they look like ants. Tell me in the comments below, do these look like ants to you? Mr. Cheap thought they looked like ants. He made a comment too that, hey, these look like ants. But I just think it adds a little dimension. And even if it was ants, it makes it all the more realistic, right? Grab yourself an eight by 10 canvas for this DIY. First step here is we're going to take the canvas off, set it aside because we will be using it again. Once that's off, I am a detail oriented person. If you're like me, I don't really like these little holes that are open on the frames. So I had spackling on hand. I'm just gonna put that in there and let it dry, but you could use wood filler. You could use wood putty, whatever you have. Once that is all dry, sand it a little bit and stain the frame. Once the stain is all dry, you want to reattach your canvas. I'm just using my Surebonder stable gun. This thing is a beast. I absolutely love it. It's a trigger fire. I will definitely link it down below along with everything else you see in today's video for you. Once that's attached, we're ready to take some white rack 
red rickrack that both came from Hobby Lobby and some blue fabric. This came from Hobby Lobby. I just love the denim vibe that it gets off. You could pick fabric that already had little white stars if you wanted to, totally up to you. I'm gonna use my pinking shears to trim this fabric into a square just to give it a little something extra and then attach all of these pieces back down to my canvas with some hot glue. I'm using my detail tip, which makes it super easy, but you could use Aline's tacky glue as well to get these pieces attached to your can attached to your canvas. Once it's all attached for the detail on the blue portion of my flag, I'm going to use some little tiny white buttons that I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to attach those with a little bit of hot glue and that's it. This sign is all finished. This DIY should take you less than 15 minutes. Grab yourself a blue jar and a red jar. Both of these came from Dollar Tree and start by taping off stripes on your red jar. You're gonna paint it white and then peel off that tape and reveal a really cute striped red jar. Once that jar is ready, set it aside. Let's work on our blue jar. You'll need to grab some wooden stars. This pack came from Hobby Lobby and paint them white. Dollar Tree has some really cute laser cut stars that would work as well. Take some twine and wrap it around the center about five or six times however thick you want that and secure it on there with some hot glue then take those white stars and hot glue them spacing them evenly all along the twine once that's done you just need some paper straws throw those in there and you are ready to go Now this decor piece could turn out to be a little educational. You wanna grab this two pack of posters from Dollar Tree in the teaching section. It comes with a Declaration of Independence along with the Bill of Rights. I'll be using the Declaration of Independence. You wanna give it a little bit of an aged look, so I just crinkled that up and gave it a little bit of brown wax around the edges. Here you can see the difference between crinkled versus non-crinkled. Once you get it looking how you want to, you need to attach it to something. I'm going to be using this Gorilla Glue spray adhesive and attach this to a piece of cardboard that I have, but you could grab a piece of foam board just as easily from Dollar Tree or even some of those Amazon boxes, save those and you could use that as well. Once it's attached, you want to work on the frame. For this, I'm gonna be using one by threes that I had in my scrapbook, or not scrapbook, but my scrap wood pile, and I'm brushing on some brown wax. You could use popsicle sticks, you could use painter sticks, you could use tumbling tower blocks, lots of options, but here you go, a nice little piece that's pretty substantial that you could put up for your patriotic decor. absolutely love to work with fabric on my DIYs. And this DIY is going to be a great decor piece that you could put anywhere. So for this one, you want to grab several different sized balls. I just grabbed all these in the toy section, a Dollar Tree, just whatever you have will work just fine. Take your fabric and cut it into strips. I got all my fabric at Hobby Lobby. They have tons of different patriotic ones. You could do summer themed ones as well. And then I also like to mix in a few of these balls that are wrapped in twine or yarn just to give a little extra texture. And that's it. This is a super, like I said, easy decor piece that you could display in a basket. You could put it on a tear tray. You could do a lot of things with it, but super easy and super fast. For this DIY, you need some type of United States. I scored this at a thrift store, but if you don't have this, find yourself a pattern, blow it up, and trace it onto a piece of foam board and cut it out. I am going to paint over my design because I don't want my fabric to show through, but if you have foam board, you won't need to do that step. Find yourself some red and white fabric. This one came from Hobby Lobby and trace around your United States and cut it out. Once it's all cut out, we wanna attach it to our United States using some adhesive spray. I'm just using the Gorilla Glue brand, but you could also use Mod Podge or even Aline's Tacky Glue. Then for the blue and white stars, they have this fabric at Hobby Lobby that is perfect. I traced around the top edge just to make sure that was good to go and cut that out and then just frayed all along the edges to give it a little something extra. Use some more of that Gorilla Glue spray to get this attached and that's it. I just love the look that fabric can just really amp up a DIY.
Let's make a wooden flag. So for this one, the blue portion of the flag, you'll need 15 tumbling tower blocks, 12 blocks underneath that. The two columns to the side will each have 27 tumbling tower blocks to make up your flag. Once you've got it all laid out how you want it to look, it's time to put these pieces together. Let's just use some strong adhesive glue here, but you certainly could use hot glue if you prefer. Once your flag is all built, we're ready to paint. Go in and paint your red stripes. I'm using a cream colored paint for the white, but you could use white. And for the blue portion, I painted the whole thing blue, but then on the front, I went back in with some of the cream colored paint. I set down some stars. These stickers came from Dollar Tree to use as stencils, and I'm going to paint over those with some blue paint. Peel those up. There's a little fine tuning you may need to do once you peel those stickers up. Then go in and dry brush it the entire flag with some more of that cream colored paint or if again you choose to use white that is fine as well. To finish off this flag tie it up with some twine, burlap ribbon, regular ribbon, whatever you want fabric and it's ready to go. It is quite a heavy little flag. I've got it displayed on that two-tiered patriotic tray I made in my mystery box. It's holding it up pretty strong but you've got yourself a little flag that you could set anywhere for your patriotic decor. And there you go, some of my most favorite summer and patriotic decor pieces. Let me know down below which one of these DIYs was your favorite. Let me know if you're gonna make any of them. I love to hear from you guys. Here are some more videos you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.